Yo, what's going on, you guys? Today, I'm reading your predictions for a Transformers 1 sequel. But before we do that, I want to take a second to give a shout out to a couple channel members, Jacobite Games and Extra Veggies. Thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me. And if you guys enjoy what I'm doing here on the channel, I would invite you to become a channel member yourself. And hey, you just might see yourself get a shout out in a future video just like this one. Now, let's get into the comments. Bumblebee will get his voice box ripped out. All right, first of all, I hope that never happens because it was one of my biggest criticisms about the Bayverse films. Sure, it was funny at times, you know, he would make a joke through the radio, but I feel like it was a huge disservice to take his voice away because it just really kind of stunted his growth over the course of all the films. Second of all, I think Keegan did an amazing job rejuvenating the character of Bumblebee, giving him his voice back, and... His overall portrayal was just incredible. I mean, Bumblebee, through the course of the film, from when you first meet him to when the end credits roll, goes through this incredible change, and he's able to really show that through communication. Because he makes a lot of jokes really early on in the film, and yeah, a lot of them are tired, especially like the badass Atron joke. But as you get closer to the end in the final conflict with Sentinel Prime and you know, the rise of Megatron and everything that's going on, you can actually, you know, you can see that he's taking everything a lot more seriously, but you can also hear the tone of which he's speaking and he's getting serious. It's almost like he's maturing through the, the course of the film. So I'm interested to see where they take that character. I think if, uh, you know, by the next film, if we did get something like Shockwave, who's obviously already annoyed, by listening to Bumblebee talk, to, you know, maybe he rips out his his voice box. I, I I don't know. I feel like that would stunt the growth of the character and we'd just be getting the same old, same old that we're all sick and tired of. We might as well just be making another Bayverse movie at that point, which is kind of counterproductive. And so I'm hopeful that they'll just keep Bumblebee's character intact, maybe just a little less jokes. I mean, something has to go down with the Quintessons, right? I felt like they just kind of disappeared in the third act of the first movie. You know what? You're 100% correct. And it's crazy too, because the Quintessons really do play such a prominent role in the second act of the film. In a lot of ways, they're a more viable threat than Sentinel Prime. And now that they're, the deal that they had is completely dead in the water and Sentinel Prime is gone, there's really nothing stopping the Quintessons from taking the free flow of Energon by force. And I think that would be the next course of action for them. Of course, they probably feel like they're entitled to the Energon. They've been supplied it for years. And now that Cybertron's no longer doing that, I feel like that might be a justification for a war. And so... We know that the Quintessons are always around. They're patrolling the surface, looking for signs of life to eradicate it. But what happens if more Cybertronians find the surface and then encounter the, the Quintessons? Or what even happens if, in an effort to try to access more Energon, the Quintessons invade Iacon or another city on Cybertron? I think that we actually need to explore that further in a sequel because... The story isn't finished yet. Well, in my opinion, they should focus more on the war for Cybertron, the civil war between the Autobots and Decepticons, and maybe Megatron might tear out B's voice box like in Transformers Prime. Okay, so that might be a really cool moment, but here's the thing. Like I said earlier, I don't think it's going to win Bumblebee any positive points by taking away his voice, except for the maybe the fact that we won't get any stupid jokes. But I think his voice should stay intact. So I'm going to focus on what you said about the War for Cybertron. Now, I'm a huge fan of the War for Cybertron video games. Played them when they first came out. Was in the top 500 for the multiplayer. whoop diddy woo Anyways, I want to see the War for Cybertron play out through Transformers 1. I think that is definitely a potential next step. But like I was just saying about the Quintessons, they are the looming threat. And in the grand scheme of things, anything that's really happening on Cybertron whether it's the conflict between the Autobots and the Decepticons or something else, really the big picture right now is the race of Quintessons that want to eradicate everybody on Cybertron. So I think they need to address that threat at some point while also maybe building the groundwork for us to lead into the war for Cybertron. So I don't think we're going to get it in the sequel. I can see that being maybe the the focal point for a third film, uh, just all-out war between both factions. I think what we're more likely to see 
is moments between each of these factions working together, trying to figure out how to defeat this bigger threat and eventually coming into conflict with each other because they realize their ideals, they just clash. Uh, Optimus and Megatron are very different from Orion and from D16, and we'll get to see those characters evolve. We might even get to see some, you know, glimmers of their past friendship. Maybe for a moment they actually get along, and uh, and then that just goes to shit. We'll see what happens. But I, I'm, I'm thinking War for Cybertron, yes, but I think we got to deal with the Quintessons first. If, brother, because most likely a sequel ain't happening. All right, now listen, here's the thing. I remain hopeful, okay? At the end of the day, I don't care about their box office sales. I don't care about what IGN had to say about the movie. I don't care about the toy sales. I just like what I like. And when I like something, I want more of it. I mean, just ask my wife. I got six kids for a reason. <laughs> but anyways, here's the thing. I really love Transformers 1, and it's been a really long time since we got any sort of Transformers media that is basically universally loved. So to finally get something, literally what we were asking for, an origin story, the 13 primes, and no humans, which was a huge deal for me, because I mean, yes, I didn't mind humans in like Transformers Armada or whatever, but... Honestly, I feel like the humans are a huge setback. They just hold back the character development and the world building because I just wanted a movie based on Cybertron. And that's exactly what we got. So, of course, I want to see them greenlight a sequel. It would be really crushing to find out that they decide, you know what, we're not going to move ahead with this, even though we already know that they have plans for future films. The sequel will be called Transformers 2. Okay, so here's the thing. I don't think they should name it Transformers 2 if we get a sequel. I think they should be a little bit more creative than that. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm being ridiculous. But I think a better title would be One Shall Stand. And then if they do a trilogy, they could name the third movie One Shall Fall. That way we get Transformers 1, Transformers 1 Shall Stand, and then Transformers 1 Shall Fall. I don't know. I think it would cater to a very specific audience like me. And, uh, yeah, uh, that's what I think they should do. See Optimus Prime become Nemesis Prime to protect Alita 1 because of his love and rage for her. Okay, so I'm not so sure we're ready for Nemesis Prime yet. I mean, we've barely spent any time with Optimus Prime. We only got him for, what, like the last 10 minutes of the movie? Yeah, sure, we got to venture off with Orion Pax, and that's all fine and dandy, la di da di da But we didn't really get a whole lot of Optimus Prime, and I think they're going to want to flesh that character out a little bit more in the next movie rather than I think change his, his paint color and give him a bad attitude and take him in a completely different direction than what they just spent an hour and a half, you know, setting up as for his relationship with Alita one. I'm not so confident. There's a ton of love and rage between the, the two of them. I mean, obviously they bicker back and forth like a, you know, an old married couple throughout the course of the film. I do think that there is potential for them to explore a relationship between Alita one and Optimus prime, but I don't feel it's, you know, a hundred percent necessary unless you're looking at it from the aspect of weakness. Every leader, every villain has to have that one place that you can hit them that, you know, it's going to hurt. And for Optimus right now, I feel like it would be threatening his people. But you, sometimes you want to explore something more personal than that. So by getting those two involved in something a little bit more romantic um, is maybe the, the best course of action. I don't know. I, I don't necessarily need it, but I also wouldn't necessarily hate it if they decided to take that direction. No sequel. That's stupid. Hold up. Two of you guys liked that comment? Whatever. Here's the thing. You're free to have your opinion. I'm not here to tell you what to like, what not to like, or what books to read, etc. I'm just here to share with you guys the things that I enjoy. Transformers 1, I thought, was really well done. And when I love something within a franchise that I already love, I just want more of it. So I think it would be wonderful for them to give us another sequel. And if Paramount decides to not produce a sequel, well, that's what's stupid. There could be a chance of Dinobots' introduction and their origins as well, which hopefully be similar to Fall of Cybertron's iteration. Okay, so I would be 100% on board with some Dinobot action, but I think we gotta start small first, which is a weird way to describe Dinobots, but either way, I, I think a good starting point would just be getting Grimlock into the movie. I would really be interested in seeing what kind of iteration they're gonna go with with him. I, I think you would obviously have Optimus and the group encounter Grimlock 
he reluctantly joins the Autobots. Maybe there's some tension between Grimlock and Optimus Prime, which would be very characteristic of Grimlock, but I don't want them to throw too much at us at once. So that would be my primary focus. And then what I would do to get the other ones involved would be set up the battle. Maybe Grimlock, you know, provides some kind of reinforcements. And that's when we get to see characters like Swoop and Snarl enter the battle between the Quintessons. Um, because I feel like if they give us every character we want in the next film, it's really going to dilute their ability to give us good, strong characters and develop their stories over the course of the movie. When you look at Transformers 1 and what they did, they were able to take D-16, Orion Pax, B-127, and Alita 1 all the way from the start of the film to the finish and really show just how much they change over the course of an hour and a half. If you start adding, you know, 8, 10, 9 characters into that and you're trying to make a focus on each one of them, something is going to get lost in translation and you're going to walk away from that movie going, I really loved the movie or I really liked these aspects of it, but I really hated that adaptation of, I don't know, Soundwave or, or Shockwave, you know, and, and we saw that in Transformers 1 because they only got a little bit of screen time and the short period of time they were on the screen. I mean, Shockwave was used as comedic relief and there was some criticism about Soundwave's voice, which I might add, I had no issue with, so I don't even understand what the problem is. But yeah, I think Grimlock is a good starting point. And I'd love to see the Dinobots eventually enter the fray and become a part of the Autobots. I think that's a, a natural course for the Transformers to take. There is two possibilities, being prequel to the Bumblebee movie or be a prequel of the G1 Transformers. I couldn't disagree more. Look, I enjoyed Bumblebee and I thought it was a fresh new take uh, as far as Bayverse films are concerned. And I'm a big sucker for the G1 Transformers. I, I've watched that when I was a kid. I've watched it peri periodically throughout my life. But at the end of the day, the, the problem for me is I don't want Transformers 1 to connect with anything. I just want it to be its own standalone continuity. I don't want it to tie into any of the comics like the Skybound Transformers, uh, which, you know, I've been breaking down on the channel. Just a, you know, shameless plug. But I don't want it to connect to anything that's already existing. I don't want to see it tie into the Bayverse films in any way whatsoever. I don't want it to tie into the classic G1 Transformers. I want it to do its own thing. And I think it has the potential to succeed based off of what it's already doing. And if the sequel lives up to exactly how Transformers 1 was able to really portray those characters and build up the world and all the story ar around Cybertron. I, I don't think they need to rely on any other IPs within the Transformers franchise to help them be successful. Combiners. Absolutely, yes. I think the Combiners will have a role in the sequel. I think they'll be used, though, to level out the playing field in whatever war that we're getting, whether it's the war for Cybertron or it's against the Quintessons. Uh, I think they'll be like a last ditch resort. I don't think we'll get a lot of screen time with them, but I think the two that they will very likely choose are Bruticus Maximus and Devastator. Now, I'd be interested to see what they do with Devastator specifically, because he's usually comprised of uh, heavy equipment like a dozer and an excavator. So to see whatever the Cybertronian equivalent would be, I think would be kind of neat. But yes, absolutely. A hundred percent. I want combiners in the sequel. Maybe the Autobots will go to Earth. Maybe. Who knows? Uh, I really certainly hope not because I think it's too early to go to Earth. There's still so much of Cybertron to talk about. Uh, there's so much to explore. We still have the war uh, between the Autobots and the Decepticons. Uh, I think we got a long time before we even think about Earth. Uh, there's still, like, there's so much to explore. And even if they didn't want to focus primarily on the main story between the Autobots and the Decepticons, there's a lot of offshoot stuff that they could give us backstory to. We could see a movie or, like, a spinoff TV series about the 13 Primes. I think that'd be a really good way to flesh out their history, give us a little bit more insight into the lore. There's a lot of stuff that I would do before I think we should ever go to Earth. Spend the time on Cybertron, build this story up, Give us three movies exclusively on that planet. And let's just not even think about humans or Earth in general at all. Unicron returns and Primus transforms to fight him or the Autobots and Decepticons are in search to find the artifacts of the Primes 
like the Enigma of Combination or the Forge of Solus Prime. All right, so I like what you've done here because it's a very lateral reach to what they've already set up in the first film. I mean, we, we got to see the 13 Primes. They established a little bit of history. We know that Solus Prime was a member of the 13 Primes, and it just makes sense that you know, if they're in a war against the Quintessons and they need a, a, a weapon of destruction that could, you know, turn the tide in their favor, they might search out for the, the Forge of Solus Prime. I mean, they, they didn't shy away from showing us the importance of how history affects the present uh, in Transformers 1. I could also see somebody like Megatron, who's enamored with Megatronus, maybe searching out the Requiem Blaster, if that's a part of the lore. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I think it would be really cool to include it. But the one thing I'm not sure about is the inclusion of Unicron. And I only say that because we don't really have established history yet. I mean, obviously we've seen why Primus became Cybertron. We saw that Primus created the 13 Primes, and that's really cool. But there was no mention that he created the 13 Primes to defeat Unicron which is something we're really used to when we look at Transformers lore and different iterations. So I think until you really establish that history, you shouldn't bring Unicron into the fold because he's going to take up a lot of attention for our main characters and literally, well, everybody on Cybertron because he's going to destroy the planet. I think that would take away from the Quintessons and I think that would take away from them being able to really fully develop the story where we see the Autobots and the Decepticons first coming into conflict with each other as two warring factions. I, I don't know. I think it's too early for Unicron. I want to see him in the, in the movie at some point, but I also feel like if you just throw him in there, you're going to be just doing a bunch of fan service, and that's not always necessarily a good thing. All right, guys, that's all for me. I think I'm starting to lose my voice. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys enjoyed this format. If you want me to answer more of your comments in a video just like this, don't forget to like this video and sub to the channel for more. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you next time.